Hey guys, Paper Bird here. Today we're looking at Dream of Fair to Middling Women by Samuel Beckett. This is a book that's been on my shelf. Uh, actually, all my Beckett stuff I took downstairs. Uh, but it's been up there for so long that it just became part of the furniture. And I wanted to save it kind of like as a rainy day read. Um, kind of like that last bit of chocolate chip cookie dough at the end of the vanilla ice cream, except with Beckett, I know it's not going to be chocolate chip cookie dough. I know it's going to be more like a mouthful of gravel. By the way, I reached 100 subscribers the other day, and I appreciate you guys watching the videos. They're, they're fun to make, you know. Uh, I just like to goof off in them. Thanks for watching. Let's take a look at uh, the Samuel Beckett book downstairs, and we'll go to the tabletop view. See you guys in a little bit. Dream of Fair to Middling Women by Samuel Beckett. Now, the marketing material in this book always makes mention of the fact that this book was written in a white heat in 1932 when Beckett was just 26 years old, but wasn't published until 1992, posthumously. Bellacqua is a character in Dante's Purgatorio. It's a kind of this lazy character. And in this novel, he's a young man who's a writer and a teacher. It just really mirrors Samuel Beckett's own life at the time, him visiting different women. There's three main female characters in this book. The character of the Smeralda Norima is based on Peggy Sinclair, who was Beckett's cousin. They just had too many differences. They would argue a lot, and they ended up breaking up. The Syracuse, based on the real-life person of Lucia Joy, daughter of James Joyce. Lucia became infatuated with Samuel Beckett. It sort of debated whether or not they had a real relationship. Eventually, you know, he kind of rejected her and she sort of suffered the rest of her life from schizophrenia, the Alba, based on a person named Ethna McCarthy, who Beckett loved and was a good match for, uh, for Bellacqua. You know, intellectually, she could hang with him. I think Joyce was working on Finnegan's Wake at the time and Samuel Beckett was intimately familiar with the wake as a work in progress, he kind of adopted Joyce's methods of composition. The idea that this book was written in a white heat just kind of implies that the author was charged when he was writing it. But instead of like opening the tap and letting things flow, whatever came out didn't seem that fluid, actually. It seemed more dense and brambly. I wonder about that with Beckett as a young writer. Was he trying to purge himself, you know, with through this energy of this sort of internal disease that he might have had? Or was he just sort of intellectually stimulating himself, sort of like mental masturbation? Because this was a writer who had a great deal of pyrotechnical skill and maybe he was showboating a little bit. <laughs> possibly trying to impress Joyce. Either way, it's pretty certain that he doesn't seem to have an interest in making a connection with the reader. I don't know, the English period to me isn't my favorite of his work, but it does really show his his proclivities, his inclinations, his obsessions that he later explores so well with the French material. His most powerful work, like Malloy, for instance, this is a work that relies on those narrative conventions in order to achieve its effect. Of course, he subverts those conventions later on. This is the greatest transition in literature. And I don't know, in some ways I like Malone Die maybe even more. It's just a, a person struggling to create. And then the enablable. Let's go on. I can't go on. The book fucked me up. So even through all the negativity, he kind of gives you something. I think The Dream is a book that takes more from you than actually gives to you. With English, he was just a virtuoso and he just had access to so many different tools and avenues and he could have gotten distracted and making up his own words altogether. I don't know, maybe the, also the fact that he's Irish, that there's a certain underlying musicality to Irish writers writing in English versus the more, you know, proper way of expressing yourself in England. This comparison might be kind of a stretch. It's almost like he's using the English language as a way of encoding his personal experiences through his own cryptography to protect the real life people that he knew. I think here it's a negative sincerity that's sort of facing more towards silence and death. Something real that you can see what blossom up into these strange worlds that Beckett creates in his later work. Google. No. Google. No. Google. No. We're not going to do that. Google. So those are my thoughts on Dream of Google. So those are my thoughts on Dream of Google. So those are my thoughts. Google. Fair to middling women. I think it, if you read it more of like as an artifact or case study or a corollary, actually, you know what? As more of a corollary to the drama that was occurring between Beckett, Joyce, and Joyce's daughter. Her descent into madness and how that madness may have played into inspiring Joyce when he was writing 
Finnegan's Wake. Maybe that madness was brought on by the fact that Joyce was writing this work. Maybe it was a sort of snake eating its own tail type situation. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the review. Let me know what you guys think of Samuel Beckett's prose. Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Google. Radiohead. Google. 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 Google.